So today we, like I said, we have Ellen Devine and Roger Molina. They are Sambia ambassadors, educators, salon owners. And today they are going to be sharing some binge worthy hair for us, styles inspired by a Queen's Gambit and flight attendants, some of our favorite shows, right? We love to talk about uh, TV shows with our clients. Um, Ellen is a dedicated lifelong learner. She's always elevating her craft. She is a full-time stylist and a salon suite owner in San Diego, California. She's been on the hair show, show circuit out there teaching America's beauty professionals. And she is an amazing, amazing haircutter. So you're going to be super stoked to, to learn from her. Roger is also San Diego based. He's got 20 years of experience in the salon. And he's also a suite owner there in um, San Diego. I don't know why I can't say that today, but um, he has really been a big part of the stage artist team and one of the lead facilitators at the Redkin Academy. Um, I got a chance to learn from him personally, so you are really in for a treat with him as well. So without any further blah, 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 lip service from me, let's um, in the chat, let's do a big welcome to ambassadors and friends to Sambia, Roger and Ellen. Hey, Andrew. What's up, hey, guys? How's it going? Oh, so thanks good. For that, thanks for that spectacular intro. <laughs> the day I realized that Andrew Carruthers was in our class, I lost my mind. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I was like, he's in the wrong place. He <laughs> I love being a learner, too, guys. I want to oh, I want to sit in classes sure. myself. You know, that's what that's what keeps us fresh. Right. That's true. Totally. So there what do you got for us today? <sighs> yeah, so today uh, we've always been from California, so we've been locked down. If there's any Californians out there, type in the chat bar, I'm here! <laughs> in California, we could do it. One yeah. more day! So we just opened back up, um, they lifted, but the whole inspiration of this class is, listen, we've been shut down. I had a hard time getting inspired, you know, if anyone's felt that way, type yes in the chat bar. It's hard to get inspired. We were watching a lot of TV shows, started liking a lot of the hair in the TV shows. So Binge Worthy Hair is all our favorite TV shows that we've been binging on. And we're going to recreate our characters' looks with a little styling and a little haircutting. Yeah. Yeah. So like being that seven out of the 12 months this year, we were not allowed to enter the salon. Um, you know, we had to find ways to get ourselves busy, keep ourselves entertained, mm -hmm. keep ourselves educated, keep ourselves excited. I'm sure you guys that have been in California or if there's anywhere else in the world that had shutdowns, I'm sure you've experienced that, you know? So getting into what turns us on really was the whole point because we needed something. And so for me, Queen's Gambit was something that well, the first, from the very first episode, I was like, wait, what? What's going on? Like, I me and Andrew were talking about it with Al earlier that it, when it comes in the beginning, uh, you're like a chess player girl. Uh, nobody cares, right? But then you watch like episode one and you see her hair setting and she's going down this like Victorian, some sort of empire. It looks like hallway with this beautiful weird hair. And I was captivated almost immediately. Right. And so the Queen's Gambit girl will be my inspiration and mostly just taking in that really short bob is going to be the one that I show. Mm -hmm. um, and sort of some remixes of, I think, that classic like French 20s look, 60s look um, that came back in both eras. But yeah. interpreting it for now, and it's something that goes a lot quicker than I think it used to for me. Sweet. Well, I know we're all excited to see what you guys have to share, and I don't want to take up too much of your time. So I'm going to jump off and let you get started. Let's do it. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. So. Andrew, while we're kind of like setting up these things, if you could bring up those slides for us so we can talk about the actual images of the girl. So here's number one, Beth Harmon. Like I did my best to match her hair color with this mannequin, but we got close, but not too close. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is give her the one that you see in maybe the second or third image, if you could scan forward for me, this one. Oh, back, back, back. There it is. That little bit mini fringe kind of crop bang in a very short front. And then also going to go stacked and maybe not exactly like a graduated bob, but more just like a flat bob that stacks out in a kind of way. But also a way to air it out so that it looks natural. If you go back to the one that you just saw, the other medium or short one, not that one, that one. 
how it has this sort of like airy wispiness to the ends. Um, we're going to work with that and try to create that with a couple different scissors and kind of this or that in a, in a way with showing different textures and results. I'm going to get those sections and everything set up in the background over here. We're doing two for onesies at the same time, Ellen and I. So we're going to try to share screens and share space. I'm going to slide back this way. Yep. yep. And then we'll go to the next slide, which is going to be the flight attendant. So if you guys notice that she's got like real casual updo. Now the whole premise of this show, if anyone's seen the flight attendant show, totally type in, I've seen it in the chat bar. Um, basically, she's a flight attendant. She's a little bit of a hot mess, okay? She goes out, she parties a lot, she throws her hair up really quick. What's so relevant about it is the fringe area that we're starting to see. So she's got that shag kind of cut. So we're just gonna give a nice loose fringe. I'm not gonna cut the whole haircut. We're just gonna show a fringe and framing. So a really easy way to create a little structure in the front. It's also something that's gonna look great when you throw your hair up. So we'll show the fringe and the framing first. And then after we finish that, we'll grab another mannequin and we're gonna do this like a lazy kind of updo. And I use lazy with a term of endearment because that's exactly how I feel with my hair sometimes. Mm -hmm. So if you look at this next picture too, you can see all the framing that she has right there in front. And so that's what we're gonna work on emulating right there. So we'll start with the fringe. I'm gonna bust a couple sections in and Roger and I are just gonna kind of play off of each other a little bit here. So we'll go back and forth. So keep an eye on both. So I'll start my sectioning to get the framing as well right now. Yeah, buddy. Okay, so I'm coming in tight. Andrew, is there a way to get like us working and the picture of Beth, the inspiration image? Same time to use the one with the short. This version working, working, working. There she is. Awesome. So, if you could see, like, the actual point of reference on her where it's short is probably right around the lip. And being aware of that from the back is hard sometimes, right? <clears throat> so, what I like to do is because I don't want to put all these sections up, I'm going to cut it dry. So, I don't want to put all these sections up and crimp them up and make a mess. So, I'm just going to push them forward. But I need to be aware of my points of reference, even though they're hiding. So I got to kind of get that hair back, see where that lip is, and then just visually draw a line in my mind from that lip straight back. Now, it might chase up to the hairline and get close to the hairline there. So I also have to be weary of that. And knowing that each hairline is different, I might have to zhuzh it down just a tiny bit. But taking that mark and saying, okay, it's around the lip, it's going to run to the back. So now I'm going to take my comb and I'm going to trap it literally right there. Boom. Get it to where you can see it. Make sure I have a horizontal line flat with the floor. And I'm going to cut little tiny bites, but a big giant slice. So I cut from left to right or from center to left. And then on the other side, I'll go from center to the right. So I'm just working the tip of my blade. And right now I'm hitting it like ax style, right? So like the whole thing, my whole scissor is closing, boom, boom, boom. The bottom blade is the one that's doing the cutting. I just want you to notice that for now. It's coming up and hitting from the bottom, boom, boom, boom. I stay in relationship to that comb the same way. There's gonna come a part of you that wants to turn your blade to the, to the adjacent, right? Or like parallel to it. I want you to stay adjacent, wrong button. So point the blade at the section, don't follow it, all right? And I'm going to cut that one all the way across, left to right. Now, drop all the hair out of my hand. I'm going to re-grab it. Notice I have my wide teeth. And this time, I want to tuck up underneath, and I want to bring the hair back to my comb. Boop, boop. So you may not be able to see that. I'm patting up from the bottom to the top to push the hair into the spine of the comb. Now I flip my hand to where my scissor is hitting the top. So now my blade is striking the top surface of this. So in your mind, if you imagine like an, an ax hitting it, the ax hits the top, the hair goes down. The ax hits the bottom, the hair comes out. So I need to get the bottom and then the top equally for it to hang straight down flat. So that's why I'm gonna do left side. I'll continue on the right side, but out of the view so that Ellen can get you set up on where she's at. Awesome. So I just busted in a couple of little pieces here at the framing. On the side, if you imagine having like a full fringe and really putting it up, I think what's key is having some framing that can hang down, be a little messy. It keeps it from being too structured. 
So we gonna, we're gonna section out just a fine little area for our framing. Now I use a zigzag part and I like to use my tail comb to do that. So when I use it, I hold it like a pencil, connect with the head and do a zigzag pattern. The reason I'm doing that is, I don't know if you guys have been here, but I tend to grab too much hair sometimes. And that's just real talk, I've cut too much before, right? So I start with a little bit at a time and doing a zigzag part will help kind of diffuse that section. So I'm not trying to do a wide section and then cut the layers really stark. I want a little texture, some movement and diffusion. Can you lift her up just a little bit higher for us? Some, sometimes on the cell phones, especially if they haven't turned yeah. off their captions, it gets a little hidden. So if she can be a little higher in the frame, that helps. Yep, so here's our zigzag part right here, boom. And if you see, thanks for that, Andrew, it's not super deep. It's a little shallow here because we just want a little bit of framing happening. So then once we get there, I'm just gonna do a section for the fringe right in front. Right now what I did to really polish her out is I blow dried in natural fall position, which is where that hair naturally lives. And I used my Artisier's finishing brush. And all I did was use a little leave-in conditioner and wrap dry it straight down. This is something I would do in the salon as well. I want the hair where it's gonna naturally fall. And that's how we're gonna cut the fringe as well. So to find that natural fall, I'm just gonna look right where that head starts to turn. Right where the head starts to turn, I'm gonna take my section for my fringe. And this is just gonna make sure that we don't make it too wide or too small. It's exactly where it needs to be at the moment. So here's my framing sectioning. I'm gonna put that one back in a clip and we're just gonna work with the fringe first. There's a couple different ways that I like to cut fringes. I'll grab the razor pretty often. I'll also just use my slide cutting shears, which are what we're gonna probably play with today. So use a couple different options as well. Now we're gonna come through and mimic on the other side. So you can see, here's my first side for that fringe area, right where that head changes direction. And we're gonna do that on this side now. An easy way to find that, lay your comb on the front, hand on the side or comb, right where my thumb touches, I'm gonna draw just a vertical line straight down and that's gonna be my perfect fringe sectioning. After that, I'm gonna put a little bit of product in and we'll get started on the actual cutting. So I'll continue doing this, catch up in a bit. All right, so sliding forward, blam. So you can kind of see the line that I generated underneath that was driven by nature and horizontal placements of combs. <clears throat> I struck the top and the bottom of the section. We're gonna do the same here, mostly now because I'm on the outside surface. Where I had stopped was just above where the head starts to round away. So what I do is take the, home, take the comb, put it flat up against the back of the head. Boing, boing, there it is. And right at that top surface, right there where it touches, right, it kind of rocks in between there and there, that was my initial separation. So I bloused it out, opened it up there, diagonal down, and I ended at that section and cut that off horizontally in case you're just joining us. Now I'm taking it back so that you can see the underneath and what we've already generated. And now I'm gonna work the hair over the top of it. Now I need to be particularly conscious of my tension. I want it to just do a natural fall flow, right? If I pull it and then I cut it and I let it go, it pops back up so hard. So I need to wide teeth, come up over the top of this section and I'm gonna come over the top surface, look in underneath and you'll see that guide underneath. Maybe like the light, it's got a little bit of shadow on it. Oh, I can get it closer. There it is. Yes. Oh, God. I'm going to just boost her up. It's like a quarter inch. And I'm going to go now, blade on top. Still being conscious of the horizontal line. So I put a white comb on this red hair so that I can notice it and pay attention. Oh, see that? It went diagonal first and ended up with a point long there because I was not horizontal. So the key to that is to always check twice. Turn in it. Notice that I'm working in what would be called bevels in Redkin language or changes in the head in anybody else's language. Basically, I'm just following the movement of the head as I go around. My tension is not pushed down to the scalp. It is hanging free, straight down. Um, I'm hitting the top surface first with the blade, pointing, 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 and removing a little bit of hair at a time. I'm doing big sections so that I do not need to just push and chop it off. I can go point cut, point cut, point cut, point cut. I'm gonna do the left side and I'm gonna do the right side, and then I'm gonna take another diagonal slice that gives me about an inch and a half of hair. 
each time I should be able to get it down in the left and right in three different sections. So final move here is going to be working from the inside to the outside, blade on top first, and then getting that section from underneath. So you'll see me abbreviate top, 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 bottom, 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 bottom. Hey, uh, Roger. Yeah. Buddy. So Katie's asking, do you recommend a shallow point cut for establishing the perimeter for this? It depends on the bulk, the density, the weight and strength of your line as it stands. So if I have a really thick, thick, full one, I get a point cut deep. If I have a really like skinny, short, small hair, I'm going to just stay really shallow so that I can build the perimeter to be stronger. It all depends on the strength of that perimeter in the beginning. Deep for a thick one, right? And shallow for a thin one. Yes. All right, so we're just catching up over here. So I just started cutting this fringe area. Now I only took those two front sections right where the head changed directions and I've elevated it straight out and it's 45 degrees below this horizontal line of 90. Should have grabbed my black comb for that wall right there. But I'm just gonna elevate the hair right here. Thanks Roger, I see him grabbing me one right now. <laughs> And so the reason I'm doing that is because I don't know about you guys, but when I've cut in the past and I've really layered up some fringe, I've always elevated it quite a bit so I can layer at the same time. I tend to over layer, especially with these shaggy fringes. I like to have a little bit of weight so that it will actually like push to the side. Sometimes if it's too feathery, I can have a little bit of challenge. So I'm gonna go back through and add extra texture later with the Invisiblends as needed. But right now, we're gonna finish this top section. So I've done it in two sections. We're working with a little over direction. And I'm working with the Sandia razor, right? So we have one, two, three. We're working with which one? The texture one. So if you guys can see here, it's that gray blade. What I like about these are that they twist very easy. And it cuts like butter. I just put a little bit of oil on it just to give me a little slip as we go. And what we could do is you could check, do this all in one big section and you could also cut it with scissors if you like. Like I said, I change it up every time. Sometimes a razor, sometimes scissor, but I'm just gonna take half of this section for control. I'm gonna elevate it nice and low. So if this line was horizontal 90 degrees or just horizontal 90, I should say, I'm gonna elevate it slightly below that. So I'm getting a little bit of elevation, which is gonna give a little bit of layering, but I'm also gonna keep some weight in there. When I'm working with the razor, I like to slide slightly past my guide, and I'm gonna come in vertically and just do a short stroke. And that's coming from really, my elbow right now is doing the work. So if you guys ever balayage or you have balayage in the salon, it's a similar action of how I would work with a razor. It's very light to the touch. I'm not gonna go too aggressive. Um, when that happens, if I'm not paying attention, you know, accidents, it's a mistake, it's all good. But sometimes I can go too intense. I'm just looking for a little bit of texture with it. Like I said, nothing crazy. But what I like about it is it gives a little bit of layering to almost just bevel that fringe. And because I've over-directed it straight out horizontally, I'm immediately getting just a little subtle angle right there. So this is just the fringe, and then we'll be taking the side to connect it all. So we'll jump in, do this last section, and then we'll move to the sides. Nice. Okay. And I got that second half of this bob done. Now I'm getting into like these wispy ends. You can see and maybe tell that this was finished out, polished out. Oh, do maybe do mm -hmm. slide back just a tiny. There we go, perfect. So, oh yeah. So you can see that where that um, the ends were here, I did polish that down with the flat iron. And I posted it this morning uh, on my Instagram, which is Roger Molina here. It has like a setup of this, which is just a quick flat iron, do it, but do it in a certain way. One thing that happens is when you flat iron, flat iron right to the scalp, you get these little erectuses. Those are, that's the classic word. It just sticks up, little flyaways, right? So I gotta stay off the scalp. I did it below the round of the head. So I only pick up hair below here, right? And when I flat iron whoop, and slide down all in one motion, it only straightens the hair that's not gonna be needing to round. So if it needs to round, don't straighten it. What I'm gonna do is work from this inside out. And now 
I want to show you something with my fingers that's perhaps like the easiest way to show you is to get up close here. And I like won't stay this close, of course, but instead of going with my basic thumb like move and putting in the blade on the top, which I can, right? So if my blade's moving this way, the top's hitting here. If I switch it in my hand, uh, Hugo Urias taught me this one. Hello, hey. Switch it in my hand. And now I'm gonna control and hold the long one. So the tang where normally my this would be my hand, whole hand, I'm actually gonna use my whole hand again but everything on that is gonna hold it. And now I'm gonna just like boop, boop, boop. So let me get it this way, boop, boop, boop. My middle finger is the one that's doing the draw. So instead of using the thumb only, now my middle finger is gonna bang across here. So then that way I can be right in front of my section and cut that stuff off. Notice that I'm barely holding this hair. Like the wide tooth of this comb is just allowing me to trap and hold the hair without pushing into it. I'm not actually combing and holding the hair down. That's a lot more tension. You can see it dip in there. So I'm letting it rest, but I'm just trapping it in its spot so that it's at rest and stays at rest. Then when I move from left to right, I'm moving from center to left right now. I'm not over directing the hair in any way, I'm moving it anywhere. I'm just blasting it off at that spot. So I'm gonna go back to the section that I just cut. Now the blade's coming from underneath. If I turn it this way, you see that the blade is actually punching the bottom side of that section. So at first I go by and it hits the top, and then I come to the second pass and it hits the bottom. That way it hangs straight exactly where it lays. Hey Roger, would you be able to lift her up a little bit higher for us? Yeah, I was just thinking about it and I didn't preempt it. I got my legs real short, so I'm like, I gotta get her taller. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna get her taller, I'm gonna keep working on these sections, I'm gonna come back in a second. So, Ellen, um, one thing I'd love for you to kind of talk to, because we have a question from Aldrich Cooper and from Denise Marie about yeah. razor on dry hair, because yeah. I know a lot of people were taught that you should never put a razor on dry hair. So talk to us about what you're doing, why you feel OK working with dry hair with a razor. Yeah, uh, first of all, that's a great question. I was actually taught a similar thing. Now, I mean, there's myths out there, right? Here's the thing that you're gonna notice. With your razor, the second that you feel it start pulling or tugging, that means it's time to change the blade. And I'm just gonna go on a limb and say it's a common thing we all do is we don't change those blades enough. So I think proper things are getting it set up with product. I use a little bit of oil. You can use whatever kind of oil you want. I highlighted this mannequin so, you know, she, she's not as thick as she once was in that hair. So I use a little Olaplex oil, bonding oil on that. And with the razor, I feel it gives me a little bit of slip. But I would say key thing is, is have a fresh blade. If you're not using one complete razor in a cut, you're using two or three. When I cut with dry hair and a razor, I'm gonna go through them much faster. Um, I even keep like all of these blades here, just in case I need to grab another one. But I think it's a common misconception. There's certain textures maybe I just wouldn't use a razor on at all, but I have no issue using it on dry hair. Just make sure you have a fresh blade. If that is good, type in the chat bar, yup, and we'll continue through. Mm -hmm. How's that go, Andrew? Love it, perfect. And I, I think that's so key just to kind of tag onto it because we're taught so many things and they all have a, they all have good intent to them, right, Ellen? Yeah. Like, of course, yeah. they're trying to teach us that because yeah, most of our clients, when they sit in our chair, one of the things they hate about razor cuts is they hate how wispy it gets or how shattered the ends get, that it roughs up their cuticle, something like that. So it's all about knowing, okay, when I approach this process, what's the effect I'm going to achieve? Does that yeah. effect fit the end result and fit the client? So it's not necessarily, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing, better, worse, anything like that? It's just know what result you're going to get because let's face it, like a little bit of roughness on the hair sometimes is totally fine. Yeah. Like people yeah. all the time want highlights. I was gonna say that. They want some texture in the hair, right? So uh, roughing up the cuticle on someone that has super, super silky hair might be the way to get that separation and texture from the hair. Yeah, I agree completely because I mean, even mannequin hair, if you guys have ever worked on mannequin hair, one, it's great to get it so silky, but I need a little texture in it. And I've definitely had clients say, I need highlights so I have a little body again. So I love that you brought that up, Andrew. Um, but really the reason I like the razor is because it's giving this like soft diffused edge that I just wouldn't get with a scissor. 
So like I said, it's also going to depend on like density of hair. If someone has fine hair, do I want to use a razor? If they have thick hair, do I want to use a razor? It just depends what your goal is. It's also how you use your razor. If I want to take off a lot of hair, and we use the, way, the razor this way a lot, is I'm going to go horizontal with it. If I'm really light, I could just do surface cutting. So I'm going to get a little bit of texture. But a lot of times we do this. So it's knowing too, hey, if I want to add deep texture, I'm going to go vertical with my razor. And then I'm going to go horizontal to get more length off. So I think it's how you use it. And also, you know, finding the appropriate person, just like Andrew said. Now to catch you up real quick, what I did originally to cut this fringe is I cut a guide right in the center and I went to the top of the lip. In the next mannequin, it's a little shorter of a version. But when you look at the TV show, her hair progressively grows throughout the whole season. So you'll notice she starts with a little fringe that starts shorter and then it's going to get longer and longer. So I'm going to cut the longer version. And then when we do this little updo, we're going to jump to a shorter version. But one thing I would say just to cut over on this, uh, what am I trying to say? The framing right here. I took this whole front zigzag section that we just took and over directed it just to the center of the nose right here. So it's right in the center of her face. It's over directed. And I kept my finger angle. Really, I had a little diagonal on it. As I cut, I slid out. So I'm leaving a little bit of length. But really what we're looking for, when she throws her hair up, am I gonna have pieces for it to hang down? And I think that is what is key. So I'm gonna do that to the other side as well. We'll take this whole section. I'm gonna over direct it just to the center of the nose. My fingers will be diagonal. I'm gonna cut all the way down and I'll let Roger catch you up where he's at too. All right. Hey so, Roger. Yeah, buddy. Um, Aldrich is uh, wondering if your shears are a custom made pair of shears or if it's something that is uh, open to purchase. <laughs> These are open to purchase. These are Sam Fia's shears. They are, you know, the thing that makes them kind of unique is, is that that little trigger for me, like, and when I say trigger, it's like, because a lot of times when I'm holding it, that's like my trigger or when I'm, even when I'm cutting with my thumb in, I'm still got my finger in that part. So I can go like, inside or I can go outside that thing. So I love it for that reason. These are the 6.25 artist series. Mm -hmm. um, I just recently got this pair from Sammy like in the last couple of days. So I'm pretty excited to be wielding such a sharp and brand new scissor. Anybody yeah. that knows new That's scissors. That's the ninja sword right there. <laughs> um, you know what, because I just opened them, I did a bunch of unboxing. And what was his name that you said that? Uh, we got it. It's uh, Aldrick Cooper. Aldrich. So Aldrich, I did a little unboxing thing that has a bunch of these uh, like things being taken out of the package. This one, the blending shear, the uh, Invisiblends, and I'll put those up today if you like. I did it for myself just because I want to remember that new scissor feeling, <laughs> but um, I'll post those too today later. Um, okay, so here, here I go. I'm coming in on the six. Now, I want to be completely transparent with you guys, okay? Back in the day when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore, but back then, this is what I learned, right? When I cut a bob off horizontal like that back in the day, in the 20s, they used to do it just like this. Like, do your history, look up this book. Um, you know, there's a book by Richard Corson that talks about the first 5,000 years of hair. Look it up. And what he used, talks about is that they used to take just clippers bam, hold this thing down. Back in the day, they used to have to rent, 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 with the clippers before motors, and they just cut that hair off blunt and flat. So the impression today that I get from that sort of shock, and trust me, this is a shock when it happens to a girl. She has to be really, really, really ready to cut it off like this. But you can, just with one little camp and cut, boom, 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 boom. That's the reversible blending shear. Make sure that the blade's on the top. So what I mean is these little pointy bits are on the top. Boom, 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 boom. They collapsed that hair flat and blunt and soft at the same time. So I could have just went around and cut that blunt line whoop, with just that reversible blending shear and did it all in the six bevels or however you cut hair, moving with the shift. But look at the difference between the texture and this is the blunt front and then this is that point cut back. So you can see that kind of airs out and breaks up differently with the point cut and it sort of takes this old school or classic, if you will, front is going to be more blunt with that idea. So 
now that I've got that bit, you know, like that's classic, that's lean, that's old school, right? That's what it looked like in the 20s. This was meant to emulate exactly <clears throat> that 20s look. And then in the 60s again, it happened. But for me, I'm going to now come through and not be, not cut the hair on the very, very top surface, but some of the stuff that's underneath. And I'm going to elevate slightly and I'm going to point cut with this. So in our bob land, we were taught to graduate to 45 degrees to create right the bob or the wedge to stack the elevation stack the weight with elevation so i'm doing that same sort of thing but i'm just going to point cut here and drop some of that hair out each time and once i've done that section i'm just going to move it out of my way notice i don't clip it i just kind of like fake hold it to the side so that i can get the hair that's underneath of it i'm not going to go too deep maybe a couple sections like this one two three four depends on the Density, as we were talking earlier, yeah, with that question. So each time I take a new bevel or a new section, I'm just pushing the hair out of the way, dropping the hair underneath. I use my scissor to come back and grab it, make sure that I take only just a slice. When I elevate, I put it in my big teeth. I drop it down, leave enough room to get in. Like, is that question earlier, how deep is it? I go deep because it's thick right now, so I'm going to point cut with that reversible blending shear. And it really airs that stuff out. If I were to get her close to you, you can see how light and airy this end becomes. Very, very light. So that's the point. As I still have those little like sharp points and light points, but I don't have just like psh, psh, psh. I have like. Pff, pff, pff. Yeah, so I'm gonna continue working that around this interior, and then I'll catch you up with the fringe. What's up, bud? I think what's really cool with what you're explaining to Roger is that a lot of times I think we enter into that texturizing process, not minding the same principles and foundations that we did in the actual haircut. The thing that you're talking about with elevating to 45 degrees is that you're actually in kind of interior with that texture, replicating what you might do to create that graduated bob effect, but it's happening on the interior of the hair through the texturizing. Yeah, it's it's and you you can you can go as deep or as light as you want. The interior is like your guide. <laughs> the yeah. interior is your guide. If it's thick and wide, you do it a lot. If it's not so much, you just touch it and move on. And make it be that you're leaving the outside surface and the underneath alone, right? Because that's creating your girth. But the inside is where you would just focus small amount if it's really light hair. Mm -hmm. I have a couple sections done on the right, but on the left, you can see the difference of how this one is so blunt and flat, but this one is now starting to air out a little bit. So I am going to add a little bit more air to the spots where it's heavy. And you don't need to see a repeat of that. So I'll slide back here and let Ellen talk to you. Yep, so just to catch you up uh, where we were last. So final product, super simple. What I like about it is the heaviness that I'm getting from this fringe. Now you can texturize it more if you'd like, but you might have seen that I took the Invisiblend as well, and I went through and I did a little bit of texturizing. When you look at that picture, you see down the side how she has all these little bits. That's what we're looking to get. So when she throws her hair up, can she pull some of these out? She doesn't have to use all of those, but we're going to take you into the updo in a second. All I did was finish it off with my Sambia Sleeker iron, and to add any extra texture, I came in on the interior with my Invisiblend, which is my all-time favorite, and I come in and just get a little bit more weight out. So that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep my elevation low, so I'm not over layering it. And then you might have seen, so I didn't cut too, too much. All I did after was I took this whole front section, and if there was any excess long, weird pieces, I just cut those down. So that is it, a simple little fringe. It's a little shaggy, but I also think it's a nice way to like dip your toe into it, someone new. Thanks, Andrew. And we also have a little shorter version of it. So this is gonna be the shorter version. Same principles, same techniques that we did. This is gonna be what we're gonna do for our updo. So we're gonna use this one after. But if you guys feel good about it, you have any questions, type it in. We are looking forward to the next look. Do you have anything else you're showing too? Yeah, I'm gonna. Well, I'm gonna still kind of just keep talking about the lady. Talking about her. Can you can you just real quick for the people that just sort of joined us within yeah. the last little while? Can you just tell them about the sectioning one more time? Yeah. That's such a key part to this face frame is how you that zigzag sectioning. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. So if you're just joining, what we did is first what we did is we actually took 
two sections in the front that went with the shape of the head. So this is where the hair naturally falls. An easy way to find that, you can put your hand or the comb on the side, a hand or comb on the top, and right where these two meet right here, that's gonna be my vertical section. This is right where the head changes direction. So where her hair lives is where that fringe will fall. For the framing, I like to use a tail comb. This is what I like to do for a lot of sectioning as well. In the updo, you're gonna notice I use zigzag sections too. Take the tip of the rep or the tail comb and just do a vertical zigzag section. This can be as thick or as fine or thin as you want, but that's gonna help diffuse the line. The reason I do this is because I used to take an entire section and if she has no layers in her hair, you're now cutting layers back here. So I'm gonna work with a zigzag section, just a little thinner of a section right here, so then I can truly just get face framing. So the whole section on the side was done in a zigzag form to diffuse and also blend a bit better and make it look more natural rather than harsh and stark. If you guys learned something, type in yes, doing good, and then we are gonna jump into the updo. It's actually really simple, two ponytails. Um, something easy, if you've seen the show, actually type in the chat bar if you guys have seen the show, The Flight Attendant. Type yes if you've seen it. Just to catch you up on it, it's crazy. It's basically a murder mystery, right? So she is a flight attendant, she's a little, she's a little bit of a drunk, it's all good. It's a TV show after all. And so she's always going out, she's partying, she's running late somewhere, she's gotta look good because she's a flight attendant. So she's got a lot of these like messy updos that I really love. Um, I think it's cool because it's something that you can do if you're using a lot of Zoom calls right now or you have to like look really good for work and you wake up a little late, something that's simple. So this picture that's up right now is what we're gonna emulate. Can't totally see the back in all these images that we see sometimes. So I'm just gonna do it the easiest way possible, which is with two ponytails and just rolling it up. So to get you started, I'm gonna let Roger catch you up. I'm gonna start by just leaving out <clears throat> this framing that I chose to leave out. I'll choose how much I wanna take, and then I'm gonna do two ponytails, one at the top, one at the bottom, horizontally, zigzag sections. So I'll catch you guys up in the back out here. What's up, Andrew? Before I let you go, there's just a couple yeah. questions that I wanna to touch on before we get yeah. too far away from your haircut. Yeah, um, yeah. Just as far as, if they don't have a lot of density on the sides, what would you recommend as far as that sectioning pattern? Oh yeah, so, and touch on this too, if you guys would like, but I like to just actually steal hair from other sections. So if someone doesn't have a ton of hair, and like it sounds like finer on the sides, mm -hmm. I'll probably take hair from the back then, because really some people, if you measure people's heads, some people's heads are like this little in the front, so they're not gonna have a lot of hair. So it's okay to steal hair from the back then. Always adjust it depending on your client's actual density of hair. Totally. Yeah, yeah and then one, one question as far as working with this kind of technique on curly hair. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'll just say this. I do cut curly hair a little different. You could totally use zigzag sections all day with curly hair. I think that's amazing, it's a great idea. Um, you could, you know, you could even use a razor on curly hair, despite what people say, you can still do that. Um, I like to cut curly hair dry and I actually like to go in with the Sanvia slider scissors for those. That's just a personal preference. You could still do the same sectioning, but what I like to do at that point is cut by the curl. So that's just my flavor of doing it. Roger might have something different. You guys might have something different, but that's kind of how I would go about it. You can still section the same, but I like to see where the hair naturally waves and curls. Yeah. Yeah? Awesome. Thank you for that. I'll let you catch up, Roger. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to come up here yep. a bit. So you asked me to raise it up. You got it. I'm a little too high. <clears throat> All right, cool. So I want to point out something. You may be looking at this and going, Roger screwed up. You're right. But I do want to point something out. So if you're looking left and right, right, you can tell that this side's a little bit shorter and this side's a little bit longer, but only in that front section where I cut it. You can tell that there's a little increase in length right here that happened. When I grab that whole section and cut it off flat, blunt with the 
reversible scissor, right? With a texture scissor, if you will, it ends up leaving a lot more length on that bit. When I come back and I point cut this, right? When I go deeper, it ends up removing the bulk of it. It still technically has points that are a little bit longer, but for some reason it just feels less long when it's been point cutted. So that's a note for itself, right? When I point cut, it looks a little bit shorter. It is going to get shorter bits within there, but the overall length sometimes gets affected, at least in the way that it seems. I'm gonna work on this fringe, and this is the ever elusive, the ever scary uh, baby bang. Now, if you guys have worked on a mannequin head <laughs> and you've done the baby bang on a mannequin head, you know that right now I have a little pitter patter going on in my <laughs> chest because I'm like, oh my God, they're gonna get it real here. So what I did to blow dry this down was using that new Sammy blow dryer with a vision one, which is sick, by the it way, if you know, so it's so sick. But I blow dry straight down as much as I can, right? Kind of lean in and you can tell, I'm gonna get her lean for a little bit, girl, okay. You can tell that it's kind of coming from deeper than normal, right? Regular fringe, you would deduce by putting your comb flat on the top and then kind of like a slight rock forward and right where it leaves right there, that's where it starts to become fringe. So you notice that I got like another half inch or so, maybe even a whole inch pushed back. I'm gonna give her a dramatic bang. So I have to know that she can blow dry those dramatic bangs. So I have to get them in the right place before I cut it. Now, I'm cutting this fringe last because going on an intense bob, intense being short, right? I left this last bit of safety for the end. Now, if I was doing just the fringe, I might leave the bob for the end and just bang the fringe off first. These kind of bobs and this sort of like aggressive bob is a, the girl that says, I'm ready. Like when the girl tells you, I'm ready to cut this shit. I mean, oof. I'm ready to cut this. You know, let's do it. Then you start with that really extreme short measure because it gives them the thrill that they were seeking. But if they're like, I think I want to cut my bob. I might want to lose my hair. More like me, right? Like I might want to cut a little bit. Don't go bam right in the front. You're going to wait. You kind of work your way out it later. This girl, the girl Beth in the, in the show, she really has a massive, like there's a, turmoil going on in this girl. She is desperately seeking something. And so when somebody is desperately seeking something, give it to them, right? When somebody's like, well, maybe I want to, don't be like, I'm desperately seeking it. So we're right? Advice. You're, you're going to her vibe and her place. Like right now, this girl's ready. She's like, do it. So I'm like, gonna do it, right? So I come right from the front, right to the outside. And I'm gonna work until it feels natural. Now you could sort of like dwindle down and follow the eye if you wanted to. You could go like, you know, vixen, like hardcore corner if you wanted to. I am going to try to keep it as flat and as like unfollowing the head shape as possible. That cartoony sort of like exaggerated fringe is what I'm looking for in this girl. I want it to be like almost, I don't know, anime in a way. Right, so I go from inside to out, and then I'm gonna go from inside to out. You always cut from short to long, and just because of the head form and where it's getting, like I'm getting into this spot where the hair's traveled farther, so technically it's longer. Even though it's the same length, it's gonna be longer in nature. So I'm gonna work from the inside to the out this way as well. I think Elle's in a good spot to get you going. You know, you know it's kind of baby bang, <laughs> kind of baby bang. Yeah. Key is keep the comb on it. I will never let the comb leave it and don't pick it up. Don't. Don't pick it up. Don't pick it up. All right, so to catch you up before he finishes that, I'll be over here doing these ponytails. So what we did is a horizontal zigzag part. So once again, the zigzag part is to help diffuse. It's also gonna help hide that section. Sometimes when you take just a hard, line horizontally for two ponytails, you can actually see that section. So a zigzag is gonna help diffuse that. So once we have that, I just used my finishing brush. So it's the Artist Series Finishing Brush. This thing is mega shine, because the pore, it's also gonna give me the tension I need for a ponytail. Now, in the, in the TV show, I should say, I almost said movie. In the TV show, I'm gonna assume she used her hands a lot, but it's that kind of messy texture. For that reason, all I did was blow dry this mannequin with this brush. So we did a little bit of leave-in conditioner and really just blow dried it to keep a rough texture. I'm gonna use a little texture spray to add to that. But you can see we left out that fringe so you can style the fringe as you'd like. And I actually like to leave some long pieces. If anything feels too long, I'll put it up. But that's up for you, or your discretion, I should say. And then since it's almost like a mock uh, I would say like a mock French twist. If you look at that picture, 
it almost looks like a modern French twist, something that you can do very easy yourself. And so I'm just taking this brush vertically, combing and smoothing it out. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's kind of the point. It doesn't need to be perfect. If it feels perfect, pinch a little bit. And then I'm going to use two elastics at once in case they break. And I'm just going to get that ponytail low to the section. So I would say these two ponytails are about an inch and a half apart. And we're going to start rolling and twisting. So really, when I do this, I'm going to use a little texture spray to pump it up. But if someone has fine hair, something you can do is take your sand via texture iron, and you can actually go through and mini crimp a couple sections in your ponytail to give it a little more bulk to it. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of texture spray. Um, and I've been playing around with product. This Verb uh, C texture spray is awesome. I love it. I'm gonna go inside that ponytail and just give a little bit of volume, texture, oomph, if you will, and do that to both ponytail and then I'll walk you through this first knot and then I'll pass it back off to Roger I'm good Keep once going. we get a little bit of that and the whole thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna work with rolls so we're gonna roll and twist something really simple easy that you as a hairdresser can do but you can also explain to your clients something they can do as well so I'm gonna hold a couple bobby pins right here set them down and I'm gonna work with this first ponytail so when I'm doing updos, I really have to like read the hair. If you guys feel like you have a little bit of a challenge with updos, type in the chat bar sometimes because <laughs> we're all there. I think when I first started, it took me like two hours to do an updo because I kind of panicked and I felt like I finished and I want to take it all down and start again. <laughs> if you've been there, say yes in the chat bar. I have been there too. And so when I'm doing any kind of up styling, I should say, you just want to read the hair. Now, in this image, she almost has this little bump at the top and an easy way to get that because I test it out. I'm like, OK, do we roll it like a French twist? What do we do? You're just going to take your ponytail and just flip it up. So if I take two fingers and just flip it over. And I'm just going to let the hair kind of roll how it wants. Right where I start to hold is where I'm going to pin. Now, this will all get pinned down and pulled out. But remember, you have to build a foundation first. So I'm gonna take my bobby pin, the wavy side will be down, and then right where I'm touching, I'm gonna to start pinning right there. So I'm gonna try and come in backwards so you guys can see here. And then after this is locked in and loaded, I'm gonna start kind of piecing it out. Now what I liked about her updo in the show is she always left her ends out. So any kind of ends that we panic over trying to hide, she kind of just let them fly really easy. Something that truly looks like you did it yourself, but fashion, <laughs> right? So once I get this bobby pin locked in, I'm just going to cross it with a second bobby pin. Now I'm going to use the wavy side against the scalp and I'm just going to cross. From this point on, after I lock in my ponytails, I'm going to start using hairpins to start molding this down and sit a little flatter to the head. And then we'll catch you up. Nice. So we're kind of rounding the corner here. We're getting close to the end. We've got about eight to ten minutes left. And just trying to take this up a notch, you know, like looking at the, pl the plain straight side, right, which is here, versus the side that we just added a little bit of texture to. You could see how like a, a modern interpretation of that texture is super translatable. I could take and just do the outside surface right there. I just did the outside surface only, and then I left the underside kind of straight. So you could kind of tweak those two together to create like a conflict of it. You could do it all the way down through. What it suggests is if you're gonna get to this point in it and you're gonna be pinning a bob up, like I got the bob laying down and behaving, doing great. If I'm gonna take it and pin it up, I have to be aware of my clip, right? So getting one that has like a tension forgiveness in it, something that won't make bends or dents. And I'm gonna keep the root natural. So I keep it drooped down a bit and I pin it to where the root's not getting angled up really high. It's kind of natural fall and then whipped. That's the whole point. Um, make sure that you don't disrupt your flow that you've been trying to create. So I'm gonna come from underneath and I'm gonna grab that section and just cramp on there. Don't go hard, right? Just go kind of light. Be real easy with the touch. You don't need to get crazy. Just like my tension, it's not like I'm grabbing and squeezing. I'm just kind of like tap, 
tap, tap with it, right? You want to be conscious of the blades. You want to be conscious of the edge of the blades. And being that you're adding texture, you really only need to bump a bit. Now, you can see the variation really well there from the back undulation to the front straightness undulation. You know, Chris Barron did right there is hard. Woo! Shout out to Chris Barron, my boy out there, if he's in the world watching. Um, I want to say that this section, when you pick it up, right, could be quite a lot of hair if it goes all the way to the parietal ridge. So what I've found is that if you want the wave to travel higher, you need to take the section just a bit higher. So turning it to the side so you can see my elevation. If I go up really high, this pattern tends to break up and open up. If I stay really low, it looks classic old school, right? When they picked it up and ironed it back then, they did it at this low elevation, right? So it got this like heavy duty wave pattern. If you take that same kind of section and you elevate it really highly, highly, and you do it up here, by the time you drop it, it really opens up and separates out. You can see how it got confusing, right? So lower elevation, strong wave. High elevation, airy wave. So what I say is a more modern version, elevate it. A classic version, low elevation. Last one I'll show here is on this underside, on the inside. And then pass it back to L to finish you off while I do my last little dusts and details. I'm going to add a little texture spray to this while she goes. Which one are we using today, L? This is the verb. We're using verb. Okay, we're using verb because we can. And we're going to take that one last bit all the way down to the root down here so that I get a lot of lift. So when I say all the way to the root, I mean the iron's going in as close as I can get. Watch the ear. And bam. So you can see it really created a lot of lift right on that underside, that last section I just did. And that'll pop everything up higher. Everything pops out because the bottom's popped out. Hit it with just a tiny bit of like the texture spray. Before I move on and finish my like little detail cuts, one thing I want to point out on the fringe is that on the left side, I did it with the blade on the top. It's collapsing and straight down. When I, when I got to this right side, I flipped my blade over and I pop, pop, pop to where the blade was hitting underneath. And you can see how the left side or the right side is raising a little bit because the blade was underneath. While this right side is, left side is whichever side, this side is collapsing because the, the blade was hitting the top. So that's a fine, finer definition of things. You don't really have to really go that deep into it. But when you do, you'll notice that the results shift and change. So I'm airing it out, hitting it with the verb. Don't get crazy, but get a little wild. Awesome. It looks really good. It looks cool, huh? Um, yeah, just to awesome. tie it up here. So all I did was just roll over my finger twist. I'm going to leave this out because that's my business. If you watch Tabitha Brown, she's my favorite TikTok person. Um, but right here, when you start like getting into upstyling and you start seeing a little bit of looseness, one, don't beat yourself up. This one's messy. It's supposed to look a little rough. Two, when you hold it, if you feel like when you see, oh, that looks better when I hold it down, that's where you should be pinning. So I'm going to take my hairpin. My thumb is inside. I'm just going to skim the surface and then hook over and just slightly start laying that down and filling in the gaps on the hair. Just like here, if I want this pinned down a little more, I'm just going to come over, hairpin it. I like hairpins because they give structure, but it's also a little bit of looseness. And it's not too serious is how I feel about it. Not too serious. But really, you can polish it off with a hairspray, a shine spray. I'm going to do one more pin right here. Boom. On the bottom. And if you didn't want these ends to stick out, which I'm all about it, all you have to do is just kind of tuck it up. So I'm going to leave them out. You can spray, give a little texture. And that would be passy flight attendant updo from my eyes <laughs> and we'll just give a little bit of texture that looks great thanks okay hey, give a little shout out to lv looks great it looks give her a little emoji or a emoji or a love emoji anything super simple i think that looks fantastic and it's so simple right very something like something that i honestly see her do on herself quite often now <laughs> that 90 second updo and then wrapping you up on where we're coming with Beth Harmon, right? She was our Queen's Gambit girl. You can see I've taken a little inspiration from it, but moved it into something kind of new. 
and moving with this fringe kind of like not quite as short as Beth's was, but I might have just taken it that short if it was on a human. On mannequins, I tend to stay a little bit longer, but you know, you know when to ride that out. And you can see it's all sitting very blunt, very flat, but also very light at the same time. I can get it to tease up and mix up if I wanted to. It's cute. Um, the color, and I know that somebody's probably saying, what is it? I don't know, but um, the color that I used on it was Lonza. It's 7cc and 5RR. I did it with 30 volume to try to pump it up higher. Uh, you know, if you go higher volumes, you get brighter red. So that's my chase there. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Andrew that's is it. back in the house. We are ready. We're in there. <laughs> oh, oh. All right, and this was so great. And so many comments on how much people really enjoyed this back and forth. This was great energy. I I can't believe the hour's gone. I think I just so much was happening on screen with you guys bouncing back and forth that that hour just kind of like disappeared. So um, great, great styles and finishes. Lots of comments on how much people took from this because there was a lot of content. If we did not get to your questions today, please know that as soon as we close today, this will still be available on the Facebook and YouTube page. So you can always go back and review your favorite parts because I know a lot of you are looking for some information on exactly how Ellen did certain things. So no worries, you can go back and review that. But um, this is such a cool thing because you took something that is so popular right now. I, th I think especially with people being home or television, now more than ever has become such a huge part of our lives. We were talking about this before we kind of came on screen. It's even something that we so often talk to our clients about like, oh, what show are you into? What show are we watching? So um, connecting uh, how we're doing different styles to what's happening in the screen is, is just brilliant. Yeah, we were stoked about it. And what we want to open up for everyone too, like if you follow us on Instagram, you can see our handles on the screen there. If there's some good shows, one, you should recommend that we watch, or two, that there's styles that you want to see us recreate in the future, message us on Instagram. We'll do it. We'll, we'd love to recreate anything. And yeah. Yeah, binge-worthy hair will be something that we carry on. Um, we're also going to be doing some like fun sort of, I don't want to give too much away, but on February 18th, we'll be back with Sam V again on Instagram and we'll have another sort of fun thing then <laughs> that's a little different that we won't give away just yet. But um, thank you guys so much for joining us. And Andrew, thanks so much for yeah, just your good blast. vibes this morning. It's so nice to watch it. I'm really enjoying the Wellness Wednesday things you got going. I've been watching those like crazy. So I appreciate those very much. And to Sam V, the man out there, we I love just, you. just say love you, bro, and miss you guys. Miss everybody. Yeah. Virtual well, thank hug. Thank you guys. Yeah, virtual hug, guys. <laughs> <laughs>